Hey, 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 all my visionaries, welcome back to another episode of the Hawk Vision Podcast, wherever and however you're listening and now watching. We appreciate you. I know you can be anywhere in the world, but you're here to rock with us. Listen, before we jump in, make sure you like our YouTube channel. We have a lot of content coming that will uh, not only be stream, it, it won't be streaming on the other content. Uh, platform so you don't want to miss out as always push the button on all your favorite social media platforms we are growing this thing like wildfire and you don't want to miss a single part of course we want to help everyone shorten the learning curve this week's guest is one of the great ones a digital consultant specializes in wordpress and website maintenance she has worked feverishly and effectively to ensure that her clients show up both professionally, strategically prepared, and more importantly, that they're profitable. If you take a look across her online profiles, you'll see that there's well over 10,000 people hanging on every word for her insights, her how-tos, and her industry expertise. She is a business owner, speaker, entrepreneur extraordinaire, and this week's visionary CEO of the Carmen Kendrick Creative, Miss Carmen Kendrick. Welcome to the show. Thank you. That was quite an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely all true. You have earned every one of those accolades. Everyone. Absolutely. So let's let's go ahead and jump right in. I um we were just kind of talking about this, and I was gonna save this for later in the conversation, but yesterday I had one of those days, right? Where I didn't want to do anything. I had tons of stuff to do, and I decided that if it's not automated right now, I'm not doing it. So I I packed it in. And I turned on HBO Max and started watch, watching Teen Titans, the the TV version, I guess. <laughs> what what is what is Carmen Kendrick's guilty pleasure when she don't feel like doing that? Uh, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I don't know, maybe just like ordering some really good food to eat and watching Netflix. Nice, nice. You can't beat some good food, especially yeah. delivery. You don't have to move. You can keep on the fuzzy socks. That's yep, a win. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's a win so let's let's go ahead and jump right in um anyone that has set up their own website has experienced the black hole of wordpress and if you're anything like me i proudly say that i am low tech and high check how <laughs> did you <laughs> how did wordpress become your sweet spot your area for greatness yeah so this story starts back to or goes back to 2012 so i started this hair company um, and I had this company to build a site for me on Wix. And the site looked really nice, but um, the back end, this was like years ago. So Wix is a much more advanced platform since then. Um, but back then they didn't have like the order management, you know, where you send your customers tracking numbers. And I was, you know, of course dealing in physical products. So all that stuff is important for customer experience. Um, and so I decided to, you know, even though I had put that money up and it was only $300 at the time, um, but still it was a lot <laughs> for me. And um, I ended up going over to Shopify. Shopify was cool because it did have everything I needed, but it's a little bit more complicated um, to actually get it to look how you want it to. And at that time it was like very developer heavy. So you almost had to have a developer. Um, site was very ugly. Um, I still managed. <laughs> make some sales off of it. Then I kind of right. ran into hard times personally. And so I just couldn't afford it anymore. And I don't know if it's still like this, but um, it was like a base price of $39.99 per month. And then they would also charge an additional, um, I guess, percentage of your sales. Yes. And so, <laughs> yes, I don't know if it's still like that or not, but um, yeah, that kind of just took me out. And I kind of just was trying to find like different platforms that I could actually afford um, that would make sense for me. And then, some kind of way I just ended up on WordPress. I think I bought my first um, my first hosting thing through GoDaddy and I kind of just let it sit there for a while. And I was like, you know what, let me try to get into this WordPress thing, figure it out. And it was like the first time I made like a site that looked nice, decent. Yeah. <laughs> and it actually had everything I needed on the back end as well. So that's kind of how it all started. Gotcha, gotcha. So you were basically fed up with with, with what you had and, uh, and kind of dove in. I wish, I wish, I would have been introduced to you earlier. Obviously, you're a referral from one of the greatest that I've ever had on the show. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I, I your boy had to go to Fiverr, right? Mm -hmm. And it, listen, it was a thing. I had to go to Fiverr because I, so same thing, GoDaddy, they were like, jump on Wix, it's easier and all that. And I, no, that's, that's <laughs> not my move. So I had to go to Fiverr. And now that I think about it, you probably need to analyze my site because <laughs> We, when we had it done, I feel like 
And I think the thing that a lot of people run into with Wix and WordPress is the plugins, right? Everything is so plug-in heavy and some have these and some don't. And if you don't know what you're doing, it just gets really intimidating. How do you manage that part for your, uh, for your clients? Yeah, so I pretty much recommend everything. So I'm very um, strategy focused. So when we before we even build a site, we're sitting down on a call and we're talking about everything this site is going to need. We have like a user profile because I know that um, we will we'll base it off three different users and we know that each user that comes on this site, they're looking for a different thing. And so we want to make sure when they come on that site, we actually have what they need that's there along with anything that's going to help the business make money, automate whatever it is from there. So just for my time being on WordPress and I'm just just always being a student, always learning something. I'm yeah. always finding new things. And of course, I just know things that work. So the tech part really isn't a big thing. Even past clients, if we're not working together, they'll still reach out to me like, hey, what do you think about this plugin? I'll be like, oh, I don't really know about that one, but hey, check this one out. So yeah. Nice. I, I just, it's, a, it's such a black hole for your boy, because when I'm, it's like every, it's almost like an app store, right? Like the, all yeah. of the plugins have different people make different plugins and then so you find one that works really well and then you go back and it's off the site and yeah. it that part is crazy is there a is there a suggested operating monthly budget someone should have for their site in terms of wordpress or outside of like seo what what should they be focused on I mean, really, it's just going to depend on your business need. Of course, you're going to need hosting with WordPress. Um, some of the more premium hosts, like a Flywheel or like a WP Engine, um, they're like the top of the top when it comes down to WordPress hosting. So one of their single site plans may run you like $25 a year. Um, and then you have other um, hosting uh, platforms like SiteGround, and it'll be like maybe $117 um, you know, for the year. Um, so it's just different things there. Um, and then, of course, when it comes down to like different plugins, like if you run a membership site, you're going to have to have a membership plugin. A lot of times on membership plugins or any like really advanced plugin, it's going to be around the $200 mark per year. Um, and then compared to other platforms, even though that sounds like a lot, that's just a one-time versus on somewhere like Shopify where you're paying that per month um, along with your monthly fee. Um, so it really just depends on what your business needs. Um, just to be transparent, I'm yeah. probably at $500 or $600 a month in just business subscriptions and like software. So. It just depends. Uh, well, that's that's why you're one of the greatest. And and that, you know, kind of leads me to my next question because you talked about having a membership platform. Um, I work backwards, right? So I read a tweet of yours a while back where you said something to the extent of your blog being the start point of your content creation. Yes. I started out totally backwards. I started out with episodes, slinging them out the trunk of the car like I was Master P or something. <laughs> um, why, why is this a good start point when a lot of people think the blog world is dead if it's not like a mommy or travel blog? Yeah, because SEO still still matters. Like people finding your stuff in Google. I mean, I think I said something about it earlier today on Twitter. Like somebody at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, they're bored, can't sleep. And they're like, you know, just researching their problem a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And so just by you writing about whatever it is that you do or what problem you're solving for your customers, like there's a very high possibility they'll run across your blog post. And then of course, you also have the solution um, that they can purchase right through on your website as well. So that being your starting point is great. And then from there, you can just trickle down because that blog post, you can make a thread out of it on, um, on Twitter. You can make it a carousel post. You can do a story on it. You can do Pinterest um, pins to it. Like it's just so many things. And I think that most people start like, oh, what am I going to post on Instagram? But if you just have a blog post, like you have like your content, like what you're going to post. I love it. I understood everything you said except for a carousel post. What's that? Oh, on, on Instagram, <laughs> it's like, you know, a carousel goes around. So those posts where you just, you know, swipe and you see like your different, gotcha. they got okay. really popular for a minute. They're probably still popular. I don't have Instagram right now. So yeah. <laughs> nice. Now, so that again, another question because everybody, most people, I won't say everybody, but Instagram is king right now. Mm -hmm. How are you able to be as profitable and as successful as you are? Like, without an Instagram? Like, how does that work? Is that back to the blog and the SEO? Yeah, so this Instagram, I was on Instagram, this thing just happened, but um, I've been very intentional about diversifying where I'm at online. So I have a really good presence on Twitter, um, Pinterest, yes. of course, my blog itself, and I've always been working on building my email list. And so recently, um, which is really crazy, but someone was impersonating me on, um, on Instagram, sorry. And oh, wow. um, 
Yeah, so I reported the page. They reported me back. Instagram took my page. <laughs> they reported you back? Yes, and Instagram took the real page down and the two fake accounts are still up on Instagram. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, and so um, I think when it first happened, it, it takes a couple of days before you can even try to get into the review process. You have to upload your ID. So for the last three weeks, every time I try to upload my ID, it's not working. It's saying I'm getting an error message from it. Wow. Um, created a second account uh, and reported the other two accounts again. My second account gets, you know, closed down. And so it's just um, for a while, I've always heard of people's Instagram accounts getting shut down. Right. And I'm not saying it, it couldn't happen to me, but I always felt like, oh, because I'm following the rules that couldn't happen to me. Right. Um, and it can, you know, that's why it's very important. Like you have to have your own space. I feel like people like, oh, I'm just gonna do Instagram and get a Facebook page because it's easy and I'm just getting started. But I'm like, you can't approach your business like that because you never know, um, you know, with one of these platforms decide to shut you down. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. I, I, so the bigger part of that, I won't say the bigger, but the other side of that, you were doing something right that somebody wanted to impersonate you, right? You, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's just aggravating that they take my account down. You know? Right. Right. So, they, they definitely got it wrong. We don't have to, we don't have to talk to somebody about that. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Your customer service support is like non-existent. So. <laughs> yeah, oh man, that's the thing right now. I am um, totally veering off, but I, I, I was, I'm a real diehard coffee head. Right. And so I was at a Pete's coffee out here uh, in the Bay area, not too long ago. And I was like, Pete's coffee would be so amazingly great if they weren't so slow. Right. And I tweeted that. And I tweeted that. So talking about their customer service, do you know they responded two days later and said, I'm so sorry you had this. I'm like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Two days yeah. later, like exactly. Starbucks would have been on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, I appreciate that they even replied and companies, yes. they have to invest in that. You know, that's reputation management that even if um, I don't put the at sign in front of your name and that you still have people searching the, you know, the internet yes. or to see what people are saying about, you know, saying about your company, because it matters. Like the right person says something. I think this one guy has maybe a hundred, hundred million or a hundred thousand followers, something like that on Twitter. And it was like a thing to Tesla, like, Hey Tesla, I can't get anybody on the phone. And everybody's commenting like with somebody with that much influence and power, you don't yeah. want somebody like that talking about your company in a bad yeah. way. So Yeah. It's 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 such a thing that I think more companies should invest in. Like, for example, FedEx, I had an amazing delivery driver around Christmas and right after by my birthday in January. And I just knew that she was coming with my new Jordans. Now, mind you, I don't wear Jordans, but I bought some because it was my birthday and I've been in the house for a year. So, <laughs> right. So, like, I, I bought the Jordan. And I knew she was coming. I was going to give her, you know, a little Starbucks card. Like, thank you. You've been killing it. You always wait till I get to the door, like everything. I got a whole new driver. So of course I'm on Twitter. I'm like, yo, what's going on? FedEx responded. They, you know, gave, they were like, give us the tracking number of the last one that she delivered and we'll get a kudos over to her and her manager. And yada. I was like, wow, that's bomb. And that was same day. So I, yeah. uh, I totally agree. And then I had, um, uh, I can't remember which episode it was. Um, the curvy fashionista though, she jumped on and she was saying that she has uh, Google alerts for her own brand so that she oh, can yeah. see what's going on, uh, what people are saying about her brand. So is that something that you suggest as well? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, even no matter how small you are, you still want to know. Um, because my thing with Instagram, I know for because they're not responding to me on social media, um, I, I just search what people are saying about my Instagram account has been disabled. Um, but I didn't really see anything where no or anybody with their own blog was just talking about their experience. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to share my experience on my blog. I also republish my blog posts on LinkedIn articles. I republish nice. on Medium. And so this is going to be all around the internet. And it's just like, I, I really have a feeling that somebody at some point is going to reach out to me because it's just <laughs> like, oh my God, like we got a whole article about us on the internet. And like, you know, with documentation, just proof of like what's going on. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. Now, one of the reasons that um, whether they know it or not, that people have a website is for lead generation and sales, right? Like yes. that's ultimately why we're there. Um, are people missing the mark when they don't include their actual website in their marketing strategy? Yes. <laughs> the website is the hub. Like everything you're doing that on in, on the internet period that's not on your website should be coming back to your website because that's where everything is happening. And that's where all your sales are coming through. That's where people are signing up on your email list. Like everything should be pointing back to the website. 
okay, got it, got it. I think one of the one of the um, guests that I had, Kashira Moffat, I always bring her up. She is the bomb at making sure that everything circles back to her site. Like it doesn't matter if it's a YouTube post, if, if it's an Instagram post, Twitter, like everything. You're you're like caught in the matrix once you click on yeah. something. I love it. I am I am a diehard fan. In regards to um your own I guess journey and, and personal growth. What does Carmen Kendrick do to to refuel and re-energize so that she can add value to her community? Uh well that's a good I don't feel like I've been doing a great job of like really re-energizing <laughs> when it's been just so busy. Um yeah. it's recently I've been able to travel just a little bit more. I know that we're still in a pandemic, but I still have been able to travel. Nice. So you know that's been helping me out. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be it's really hard because even before working from home, it was cool, but at least I could go to Starbucks and like just get out of the house and change right. my scenery up. Um, but just sometimes if I can't do anything, just going to Target or just going to the grocery store, doing some shopping, just getting out of the house, period. Sometimes it's just that thing that I need to get me to the next level or to get me back into that, um, back into working. And then sometimes when I'm, I'm at the house and I'm working, I'm starting to like feel low. I'll just stop and I'll, you know, I'll go wash some clothes or I'll go clean up the kitchen just so I can kind of get out of that, just that work, you know, yeah. work time frame, work mindset. So. Listen, after this, after this haircut tomorrow, I'm gonna be the cleanest thing in Target. Trust me, I'm, <laughs> that, that, that's that's gonna be an event. I'm gonna walk through there. Um, <laughs> it's gonna feel good. Listen, I, I know I'm not by myself. People dressing up to go to Target. Working working from home is bomb when you have the choice to do it, right? <laughs> when it's right. mandatory, it's like this is worse than being in the office. So, exactly. yeah, I totally get it. You were. Um, you were referred by one of our most popular and most downloaded guests, T Tamara Sykes. Um, hey. How important I'm, she is, and and I'm, I'm some of it has to be your SEO. Like I would love to say that I'm that great, right? Even though we have the countries and the states and all that stuff, but um, how does it how does it feel to have an important network like that, a power circle, uh, so that you can have additional uh, points of entry to different mediums. Um, it's amazing. And just to be, I, I had a Twitter when it maybe like when Twitter first got hot, 09, 2010, yeah. but I deleted it. I mean, it was just, and it was even funny. I just have that personality where like, I can just, I talk and whatever I say, like, it's, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, I'm educational. But back then it was just like, I'm just saying funny stuff, whatever. Um, okay. but, <laughs> um, in 2019, they were having a word camp here in Atlanta. And so the first word camp I went to, I didn't really, meet anybody I wasn't interacting so I'm like oh that was a buzz so this well, that I think 2019 I decided like hey I'm gonna get on the Twitter and start talking to people so that way when I get there I can see some familiar faces and nice. from there it just and I just I share my experiences is that I think that's what really helped me to kind of just grow on Twitter because I don't claim to know it all I do know some yeah. stuff I don't know it all but I just share and I think that's why so many people are drawn to me is because the transparency that's there and that I just give away so much. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. She, one, she's awesome. Two, um, I agree. I think that we fail to, often we fail to network the way that we're supposed to, right? Like we, we miss, you know, similar to yourself when I had, I, I jumped on, I think I just did my 10 year Twitter anniversary. And, uh, when I jumped on initially, it was the wild, wild west, right? It was <laughs> right. Like I, we, we got to go make sure to scrub that, scrub those early years. Um, but to your point, I think the the best part about it is that you were able to leverage it, and now you know you use it as a tool to to grow your brand, and then you know still get some of those some of those good tweets off. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That's the thing about it. Like I feel like when it comes down to relationship building and networking, like you can't expect anything out of it, but just connecting with people. Um, Ryan Cox, he's an accountability coach um, and he actually found me on Twitter and he's so great at just relationship building, like reaching out to somebody. Like, I think I went viral or I guess level two viral. Last year on Twitter. <laughs> That's what I call it, level two. It wasn't a really big viral, but it was level two. And so he just reached out because he was like, I want to hear your story. And he was like, let me buy you a cup of coffee. And it's like some random white guy in my DMs. I'm like, what? But when he yeah. said, let me buy you a cup of coffee, I'm just like, well, I mean, ain't nobody like really offering to buy no coffee or anything. <laughs> so I was like, I just took a chance. 
and I talked to him and like, he is just like, he was amazing. But um, what I learned from him, the most important thing is that sometimes you'll meet people and nothing happens right then at that point, but you just never know. Like I've had to happen so many times, two years later, a year later, six months later, they reach out to you um, because if they didn't need the service, they know somebody else that needed it. And because they, you know, came across you, they're going to recommend you, even if they never even work with you or even really know your work like that. So. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. And listen, anybody, anybody watching this, Chuck accepts all coffee. Like, <laughs> yes. All coffee. So listen, that's, I that's, use it in my strategy now too. So that is, um, that's a gem. <laughs> you got to, you got to. Matter of fact, speaking of which, Pete's Coffee, now that we've made amends, feel free to sponsor an episode. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, the other day you mentioned, uh, so this was like you speaking French to a Russian person. The other day when you mentioned this, you said <laughs> that your bounce rate as well as some, you mentioned your bounce rate as well as some fluctuation in your site visits, right? Um, and, and what is that one? And then two, why should people study those types of analytics? Yeah, so bounce rate means that people, for example, you Google something on, and we've all done this. We Google something, we go to a site, and like, it don't have anything talking about what we were looking for. It was just kind of like, it was um, clickbait in a sense. And gotcha. so we go right back, we click the back button and go right back to the Google search results. Okay. That is me bouncing off that page. I didn't look at any other pages on that site. I went there, stayed mm -hmm. for a couple seconds and I went back. Google, it takes note of that. Um, and Tamara, she probably said the same thing about how it works. Um, Google, they want to provide a good customer experience. And so they don't want to show pages on the top page that people are going to and leaving because that means that they're not finding what they need while they're on that site. And so just keeping track of things like that, um, it just helps you know, especially when you start spending money on marketing as far as ads and things, it helps you know like, okay, what pages are people coming in on my site? What pages are they staying on? So that way when I do my marketing strategy, I can make sure I put these pages in the forefront and I can get the most out of my marketing dollars. So you can use that to literally order the, men the menu bar, right? Where you can say, since people are spending more time on this page, I can make this the first click. Yes. Wow, light bulb. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like, you know, analytics is one thing, but being able to analyze um, the analytics and actually put them to use, that's like another thing. But I feel like anybody can do it. Um, you just literally just go in there and you just start clicking around. I think almost anything we get now, you just you get a new iPhone, even if you have no idea what it does, you just start messing around with like, oh, that, that goes there or this is that. And so you just kind of get used to it. And that's literally like what I did, just looking around, like, okay, I understand what's going on now. Um, wow. But yeah, that was that was quite a crazy thing. I think what happened, because I noticed that, because I am tracking my analytics, I know that people will stay on my site about two to three minutes. And then right. I get on there and I go on my dashboard, I'm seeing that people are staying on there for 49 seconds. And I'm like, what in the world? Like Rocking, we go from right. three minutes to 50 seconds, <laughs> like cut, cut the tape, what's going on? <laughs> so I, I get in there and I see there's a whole bunch of spam um, referral traffic coming to my site. And I'm like, okay, that's what's causing it. And it really does not affect your site itself, but those numbers you need clean data to make decisions. Mm. And so if you have all that bad data in your Google analytics, like you're making, or you're spending the wrong money on marketing when you're doing ads or anything else related to spending money on marketing. Nice. Nice. So have you, have you run across an, ex uh, an experience where you use that information to change a whole page out or is that uh, something that can happen? It can happen. Um, I mean, I can't think of an example right away where you would change it all the way up um, other than, I would say I use it more so depending on what I'm trying to, um, what's working and what I can just put more focus towards. So um, if you have the e-commerce or any type of e-commerce on your site and it will tell you like which channels this um, purchase or orders are coming from. So it'll mm -hmm. show like Facebook, two people made a purchase and they came from Facebook. So I know that I wanna continue to put my effort into Facebook versus other platforms because I'm already converting there. Nice. So. Nice. I love it. I'm learning so much because I tell you, <laughs> WordPress for me, um, I, I've gotten to the part where I can log in <laughs> successfully <laughs> and create a couple of things. I can, up, you know what? I, I can update better than I can create. 
Oh yeah. And that's like for the average um, business owner. And I'm yeah. ready to even start talking about that, how my, how my mindset is evolving that everyone, I think that we all kind of go into business sometimes, but like not really having a lot of money to get it started. And now yes. I'm thinking like, why would you start a business if you don't have any money? <laughs> and even though I did it that same way, like I get, cause you can, you can start a business with no money, but you can't run a business without any money. Right. Right. And I think that's the hardest part. A lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, you see all the social media saying, start the business, start the business, make it better later. But it's hard to build with your back against the wall. Right. Yes. If when you need money, it's hard to be able to focus clearly on step A, step B, step C. You're like, I want to sell this. I need to sell this package. And people are like, well, what kind of package is this one? I don't know what it does. And so it's, it's really hard to build with your back against the wall. So tell me about that for yourself. Like, how did you, what was the turning point when you knew you had a functional business so that you could be, you know, an entrepreneur that everybody depends on? Um, I think that turning point was when I started investing in myself, even, um, I don't advise people to do this, but sometimes you do, you know, you make a bet on yourself. So I remember, um, I really wanted to invest in my brand photography because of the space I am, I'm in a lot of people, um, especially like me, they have a lot of custom, they take, you know, pictures and it's all over the internet, all over their sites. And so it's very custom, it's not stock photography. So I worked with a photographer and I think she was like 1500. And this was when I was just hot side hustling my business and I was working a full-time job. And I I mean, I was making just enough money to make ends meet, but I was like, you know what, Verizon, y'all can wait until next month to get y'all money. (laughs) <laughs> um, I called to have you enough. I was like, hey, can I get a, you know, am I eligible for a forbearance or a deferral? So yeah, three yeah. months, okay, I don't have to pay that. <laughs> you know, I just, I just made it work. And then I just seen, once I made that investment, I put those pictures out there. I'm not gonna say it happened all at once, but I think what happened is that people saw that I was serious. Right. Yeah, I love it. Ain't nobody trying to pay Navient anyway. Like I just <laughs> I'm almost done with them. This year I'm done. <laughs> Congratulations. I am uh, listen, I, I I can't lie. I have one of my daughters. I'm just like, you know what? I go ahead and cancel the student debt. Just go ahead and they get that done. Everybody be happy and we can invest more money. Um but to that point, so talk to me a, a, a little bit, if you can, about structure, because um, and t- we talked a little bit about it earlier, about the budget that you have for your business, but you mentioned investing in yourself. And so I guess it depends on if you have physical or digital products, but is there a plugin or is there, a, what's, what's the magic I don't want to say the magic trick, but what's a, what's a cheat code that somebody could have that has an existing site and uh, want something to perform a little bit better? Um, honestly, I would just put some money away and just try to find somebody to audit your website. Just Because usually mm-hmm. if a professional builds your site, yeah, that's gonna be really expensive, but just having them to audit your site and tell you like, you know, what can be fixed or what's wrong with it, that can go a long way too. And so from that point that you can hire somebody on Fiverr because you have like a list of all these suggestions and you know exactly, hey, I'm hiring you to update all my blog posts to include this keyword. And so if you're on a budget, I would definitely recommend going about it that way nice nice i love it um is there one or can you tell me about a time where you almost quit or question if entrepreneurship was for you um well i haven't had that issue lately but when i was working a full-time job and i know that i wanted to you know become a full-time entrepreneur I just, cause I was even working from home at that point and I was still like very depressed working my full-time job and I really wasn't yeah. getting any clients. And so I remember I was laying, I'll never forget. I was laying in my bed one night and it was just like, if you quit, then what's your alternative? Mm. And so it was like, there was no alternative. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, you got to make this work. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Cause if, if you quit, it's almost like the only, the only other option is the, the misery that you were trying to escape in the first place. Yes. And I was pretty much in a dead end job to just to keep it real. So I worked for an insurance agency. I didn't work for like the huge company. I worked for the, like a small agent, small business owners office. And so there's not really, um, you know, any upward mobility within the company because it's just, it's a small business, you know? Um, And so, you know, raises and things like that, there was really nowhere for me to go with then just looking for something else. And that's not what I wanted to do with my life. I know that even if I did make that kind of money, I still wouldn't be 100% fulfilled. So I love it. I love it. I don't think enough people 
put enough onus on that in saying, you know, yes, I'm making a living. Yes, I'm doing what I what I can, you know, but this isn't it. And then a lot of people stop it knowing that this isn't it, but they don't move to that next step of, okay, what am I going to do? Like that comfort level kicks in, keeps a lot of people frozen. How did you escape that part? Um, just looking at people around me, um, you know, my mom and dad, like they really don't have it like that. And okay. I just, I just think about now where, when I'm in my fifties or, you know, I don't want to, or my sixties or even older than that, I don't want to like not have anything that's set up for me. And I don't want to have any regrets. Um, I remember listening to this podcast a while back and it was saying that, um, we probably are going to be on this earth for at least 70, 80 years. So that means you have a decade, 10 years to do something different. And like, that's always stuck with me. I'm like, I can literally do something different every 10 years. And I still have so much, I'll be 30 this year, but I'm like, I still got at least about 50, 60 more years. And so, you know, run it up. (laughs) She said, run it up. (laughs) Run it up. (laughs) I love it. I love it. What do you, what do you think that, uh, what's something that you wish you would have known or somebody would have been able to tell you before you jumped in that you're just now finding out about business? Uh, Mindset. Mindset has been very important because um, without mindset, everything you'll look at, it will feel like, oh, it's just a a big chunk of money that's coming out and you really don't see, or even just delegating um, or, you know, trying to find a team or not even thinking you'll even afford enough um, or you have enough clients to, you know, to build a team. It's just like just having that mindset. If I had somebody just tell me like, you know, change your mindset. I don't even know if someone can even teach you how to change your mindset other than just experiencing it. But that was like the biggest thing I felt like has, has held me back for like the longest. And I feel like I'm getting better, but I'm like, I'm still noticing like, wow, I could have been so much further along had my mindset been where it is right now. So. Yeah, it's, it's a process. I, and that's why, you know, one of the reasons we launched the podcast, personal growth is, it's not an off and on switch, right? It's something that you have to do religiously. Like for myself, I listen to a lot of audio books at night um, or when I'm, you know, if I'm, if I have a, a, a good drive, you know, sometimes I'll turn off Rick Ross and turn on. Oh yeah, <laughs> you have to. Yeah. It's uh, it, because I think you, when you first start, it sounds like you're lying to yourself right? It sounds like all these, these thoughts of prosperity and wealth and doing better and affirmations, all of those things sound like you're lying to yourself until it's consistent, right? Right. Until you hear it more often. Um, Who does, who does Carmen Kendrick read? Who does she listen to so that Uh, she can be a boss? Yeah. So I'm, I haven't like really delved into any fiction, which I should, because you need a good mix. But I read like a lot of business. Well, I listen to a lot of business books. <laughs> okay. um, I mean, just some of the greats like Seth Godin, uh, Michael McCallowitz, Profit First, that book. I was telling my friend next to the Bible that may be like the second <laughs> best book I've ever read. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, Noted. Exactly. We will make sure that's in the show notes. Oh, yes, yes. If you're trying to, you know, get your business finances together, like that book is going to help you so much. Um, And so those are, oh, and Donald Miller, Building a Story Brand. Um, That's another one. Um, And just, I feel like once you start reading a certain set of books on Audible or Amazon, whatever you may, you know, get your books from, they'll just start recommending other books for you to read and they all make sense. So, yeah, yeah. I am uh, currently listening to uh, Think and Grow Rich, uh, The Black Choice. That's that's my my, is that my Napoleon my Hill. It's Napoleon Hill, but um, it is a different author that did, that did it. And right now, I am going to check because the name escapes me. Dennis Kimbrough. Okay, I don't think I'm familiar with him, but I I do know Think and Grow Rich. I yeah, think I've I've never made it completely through that book, so I may need to revisit that. It's a tough read, but once you um uh, once you figure it out. It's um, the answers on every page. That's the clue that was given to me mm-hmm. um, when I when I was told to read it by my mentor Edwin Haynes. Uh, the answers on every page. Dennis Kimbrough though is one of my absolute favorites. I think it's um, delivery more than more than anything else. He talks to you like the rich uncle that's tired of you coming over because you argue with your parents. <laughs> he he kind of gets at you like that. Um, getting close to wrapping up, but uh, a couple of more questions for you. Uh, does does hosting does hosting sites matter when you're dealing with WordPress or when you're dealing with what what's the option? It's WordPress, Wix. It's um, I don't even know the one GoDaddy tries to sell that's built in, but 
I think it's like it was literally called like GoDaddy website builder or something like that. So <laughs> that thing is horrible. Yeah. It's no, no. Now listen, GoDaddy, we don't want no smoke. No smoke at all. <laughs> we don't want no smoke. But that thing needs some work. Um yes. but does it does it matter who who you have um in terms of integration and what works better with what? Yeah. So as far as like if you if what hosting provider does that matter? Is that what you're asking or? Yes. Yes, it definitely does. Um, now, when it comes down to just WordPress itself, there are like so many different WordPress hosts out there. Um, some of them are what we call the budget WordPress hosting and just simple breakdown of that is like you're in an apartment building and you share water, you share everything with your neighbors. And so sometimes if somebody's using too much hot water, then you're not going to have no hot water in your unit, <laughs> you know, especially if it's like an older. So that's like what budget hosting is. They put all these sites on this one server and you're all sharing these same resources. Mm. And if one site is using more resources than yours is, and it could potentially make your site bad. Um, and then you have your more premium host like WP Engine or Flywheel and they put your site on a server by itself and you pay a little bit more money for that. But you don't have to worry about your site being slowed down or something happening because other people are connected to you. Wow. See, these are all innovations that I um, honestly was not aware of. I remember being on Twitter, you know, years ago and I remember some of the people that I would, you know, kind of rock with in our network that we would like have to tell each other, hey, your site's down, just so you know, like Ooh. go, you know, and it would be like, oh, GoDaddy couldn't host or something like that. It was, it, it was the weirdest thing that time. And then for now to, to know that there's companies that will put it on their own server for a little bit more is huge. Um, I looked at when we were doing the research so that we could get ready for this episode, you have so many examples of amazing websites on your page um do you ever sit back and say you know what I've helped a lot of people get the bag how does that feel uh yeah I never thought about it that way to be honest and that's what I'm saying my mindset what? there are shifted. there's so many oh my god okay my mindset but... just shifted in that <laughs> even when it comes down to pricing when you realize what you're doing is you know you're it's not it's a thing that you did for somebody it's about what they're going to do with that thing that you did for them I feel like that was all yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah so I never thought about it in that way but now like yeah I have helped a lot of people I am helping a lot of people get to the bag so yeah <laughs> it's it's crazy you, you you are literally creating a um a living resume of success and and I think that we you know if if no one else has Chuck is definitely going to give you the flowers because I'm looking and I'm like, these are people that I had on my radar to be on the show. And to know that you're the, the power powerhouse behind them, it just, it cements it. So I, I was looking at that and was just like, oh, she, she is not a game. She is not a game. You know, some people refer friends that have businesses. Uh, but one of the things that I love about this, this show is that everybody that has been on this show as a certified Googleable heavy hitter. <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> yes, yes. So do, do you have a favorite, I don't want to say a favorite client, but when did you, what was the hardest uh, hurdle to overcome while creating a site for somebody? Was it simply design or was it back office stuff? Um, back office and process. Like you can be a great designer, but if you have no process for dealing with clients or even getting clients, like that business model is not going to work. Um, so even when I made the decision, hey, I'm going to start designing sites because I thought I was good at it. I had to take a step back for like a year and just really just work on my process. Like, you know, when they come on as a client, do they know what's going on? Like, how do I make sure that they like the site and we don't get to the end and they just like, you know, it's just not what I was looking for. Um, so just learning that whole process. And I feel like anybody can design, like you can literally look at good design and start right. understanding like what makes sense in design but just working with your clients and you know getting to that level like that does take extra research and some time to get to that point I don't think enough entrepreneurs focus on the customer journey right and and, and I think that that's something that we need to do more of because we spend so much time on websites with just I mean on a social media where it's like you click you do I think the website has to have a very strategic, even I'm learning this myself, a very strategic purpose in that customer journey. Can you explain what that looks like or what a customer journey even is? Yeah, so the customer journey, just simply put, I think um, if I got my stage is correct, it's awareness. Um, when they find out about you, you're on social media, they come across your Instagram page, it's consideration. So they're going, going over to your website 
and maybe they sign up for your email list and you're just shooting off different emails so they can get to know you. That's consideration. And then the last part is decision. Um, so at some point, we're hoping that with all this nurturing that we're doing, whether it be email or just connecting with them again on social, that they're going to make a decision to actually work with you. Love it. I love it. And and I've never heard it put so clearly, so concise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, like it's just wrapping on up. Like this is Yeah, exactly- she like, let's take the emotion out of it. These are the three things you gotta have. Um, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. I am a, a diehard fan. Um, this next part is my little my little rapid fire round. You tell me what these words mean to you or if they mean anything, because it could be absolutely nothing blank spot um but, but the first okay. word is uh belief what does the word belief mean to you um belief to me uh just means that you got faith or for my personal situation just having faith in myself to keep going nice um what does the well this is a two-part word work ethic work ethic um Doing things even when you don't want to do them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now I feel bad because yesterday I was watching HBO Max all day. Listen, all right. that happens. You have to take that break and just walk away for a day and come back to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Shira is really good about uh, teaching to give yourself some grace, you know, and uh, it was just, it was one of those days where I was just like, I don't have it. And I knew I didn't have it. Like I was trying to be productive and push through. And um, I think I talked to my, my sister and my sister was like, well, you kind of do motivate everybody. You're going to need to. And I was like, yeah, no, I, you, you know? yeah, I'm like, yeah I, I don't have it. I can't. I can't. And so I put it on Twitter. I was like, you know what? Today had hands. And sometimes we have to admit that. Um, last word. What does the word vision mean for Carmen Kendrick? Uh, vision to me means long-term, like just outside of even today or next year, like what am I doing, you know, 10 years from now? Like, is this the, is this the end goal of what I'm doing right now? So just looking ahead long-term. Nice. Well, we know for you in 10 years, you're going to do something different because you got the, the, oh, the 10 yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. I've already been thinking about it. I'm just like, yeah, it's time to switch it up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Have you, have you entertained the thought of growing in a more um, coaching manner? Um, for some reason, I don't. Coaching hasn't really um, struck me, even though it's a lot of people that do come to me about coaching. Exactly. Um, <laughs> like one-off sessions, I, I'm thinking about considering um, doing one-off sessions, but even the one-offs, I'm just like, they're going to, they're going to be worth my while. Um, and yeah. also, I feel like the information I give that they can at least um, three, four times, five times that investment in me um, from what they're going to do with the information. So at some right. point, maybe. Is it hard um, with the with the sites like Fiverr and WeWork and things like that coming on on board? Is do you find it harder to compete, or do you find that people use sites like that and then come to you after they're ready to like start really really investing? Yeah, the latter part of it. There's no competition in any web designer developer that's listening. There's no competition because those people they're just order takers. And right? just to put it simple, like you go to Burger King and you want a number one with a, a sprite. In a large fry, they're going to give you that. So it's no outside thought. They're not thinking about any strategy, like how we're going to actually get people when they get on this site, what they're going to do. They're just going to give you exactly what you tell them to. Um, so I mean, if that's you know what you want to use to get started, that's fine. But sometimes you will, they will find themselves circling back and working with somebody like me. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the huge part is uh, a lot of people fail to launch their business because they feel like there's too much competition um, and there's there's other people you know in the space. And I'll never forget, I had a mentor to tell me, he said, Chuck, listen, if you go down to dog food, there's about 74 different brands. Yes. Them dogs don't care. <laughs> you know, <laughs> some dogs are going to eat what they're going to eat. And there are options for everybody else. And you pick and choose. And the one that works for you works for you. There's enough money to go around. Um, similar to the mindset thing that we spoke about a little bit earlier, um, affirmations, journaling vision board what what does Carmen use um so vision board definitely um I have a a funny vision board story I guess so for a long time I don't know when I found out about golden doodles um (laughs) love them oh my god I love those kind of dogs so anyway I went on Pinterest cut out a picture of a golden doodle 
put it on my vision board. And I didn't realize I was telling people, a lot of people about, you know, what I wanted. So last January, um, before I moved to this location, um, I was talking to my neighbor on New Year's Day, I think. And she was like, hey, the girl that works for me, she just got a golden doodle, um, but she's pregnant and like the dog is making her sick and they're trying to sell the dog. And I was like, really? Like, and these dogs are, they can get really expensive, like $2,000, $3,000. And I wasn't going to spend wow. that much money on it. And she right, was like, right. They want like a thousand for it. And I was like, well, me negotiating, will they take 800? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there it is. The It's like, it just fell into my lap. And it's just so many different things. Like even the house I live in now, like it wasn't this exact house, but it was on my vision board. Like, hey, I want to be in a French style home, you know, hardwood floors throughout backyard, everything. And boom, here I am. So I will say when it comes to vision boards, you can't just put that stuff up there and just think it's going to work for you. Like you got to be making some steps and whether you yeah. believe in God or some universe, like either one of those that you believe in, they have to see you making some steps toward it, even if it's not the right path. Like I feel like it's just going to, you know, shift you and where you can get to where you want to be as long as you're making those actions toward it. Yeah. Yeah. Consistent, consistent effort, consistent progress. And uh, similar, I think uh, I told a story a while back. I used to have this vision of a walkway at so upstairs where you would have a hallway, but on both sides of the hallway, you could see downstairs. Mm -hmm. And I had that in my, in my on my vision board for the longest. Didn't realize that I was living in that house, right, for almost oh, wow. a year and a half before I realized what was going on. And then I was like, oh, we got to change this. We need another house on the thing. And so the wife had, uh, she had talked about, you know, building from the ground up. And that was part of her vision board uh, way before mine. But, you know, she's a lot more patient <laughs> than, than I am. Yeah. And, and we ended up building this one. So I am a fan of affirmations and, and vision boards and things like that. Um, I guess the, there's only one more thing to, one more thing to ask. Okay. <laughs> only one more thing to ask. Um, what makes Carmen Kendrick keep going? Um, I don't know, just seeing myself or just thinking about just being the greatest version of myself or what the greatest version of myself can look like. I think that's what keeps me going. Back to the vision. I love <laughs> it. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you have been rocking with the greatest to ever touch WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and your humble host as well. So make sure that you like, share and subscribe all of your social media platforms. We want to help you shorten the learning curve. Share this with other visionaries just like you. World famous, Carmen Kendrick. Thank you so much of the Carmen Kendrick Creative. Let everybody know where they can find you online. Yeah, so my website is CarmenK.com and it's I am Carmen K on every platform except for Instagram right now. <laughs> We're going to talk about Instagram. Yeah, that's <laughs> unacceptable. And, uh, and, and more coffee networking dates. Yes. <laughs> it works it really works i love it thank you so much for spending some time with us thank you absolutely